Good morning, folks. We've got news from around the world and into space today, hopefully having a special video coming out for you this afternoon. But here we see the filament scenario is dying back. The sunspot scenario has been quiet, even with active regions attempting to form on the disk here and there. But as observers have come to appreciate here in the last few years of sunspot cycle minimum, we've still got coronal holes. Let's go to spaceweathernews.com. We find the last day on our star with those coronal holes visible across the disk. Northern opening is departing, southern opening swinging in to face Earth over the weekend. The stream from the departing system impacted Earth yesterday morning and took a brief intensification again yesterday over 500 kilometers per second, but not really that much higher, and has already dropped back this morning. KP4 of a mild instability in the geomagnetic system is all we took. Remember, it is the streams that get to 6, 7, or 800 kilometers per second that can really cause those geomagnetic storms. Let's go to Australia. Their bushfires and hailstorms have taken a backseat to a dust storm that tore through the region. Actually looks like a Middle East dust storm during one of their events. In the U.S., the cold and snow slammed the Rockies overnight again, but I want to focus on the forecast for tonight, where severe storms could populate the southern edge of the convergence line easing into Appalachia across the northern portions of the Gulf states. Meanwhile, that rain event that we discussed has already begun in Portugal and Spain, we mentioned it would shift eastward thereafter and take on the rest of the Mediterranean, and it will indeed do just that over the weekend. As initially forecast, the storm is still slated to hit Greece on Sunday. Eyes open in southern Europe. Well folks, we've got a mystery on our hands here in the toothbrush relic. First, there is no mystery as to why it's called the toothbrush relic. That should be pretty obvious. But the mystery here is they're seeing that, oops, Model mistake. It is not the result of a shockwave collapsing a gaseous region, not so simple as their model portrayed. Their focus here on looking at turbulence and magnetic fields to try to find an answer reminds me of the recent discoveries like that in star forming molecular clouds. Something tells me they're going to have the same amount of luck. Up next, let's talk exoplanets and their ability to house complex life. It turns out that Earth sized planets probably aren't going to do so well around most stellar systems, not unless they get a nice G-type star like our Sun. Within the much more common, smaller star binary systems, the Earth would struggle, but alas, they do suggest, once again, the universe should be teeming with life, as most of those smaller planetary systems will be like Trappist, where there are actually three or four planets that have the potential to support life. Let's go next to Meerkat, where a star was seen brightening over a period of three weeks. It peaked just last month. Interesting because it's not a huge stellar flare, it took too long, and the ramp up is too slow for a nova. So what's happening? They think it's most probably a binary system feeding off each other, but not so regularly or with the dramatic swings as you'd see at something like a pulsar. Their best explanation is a very wide orbiting binary system where the close approach is what causes the brightening. This is basically another combination of the coronal accumulation and plasma instability double whammy nova trigger, but for a much smaller scale event. Taking the scale up a bit, we find the radio halos of galaxies helping to illuminate the breadth of the circumgalactic medium. While the visible and UV returns of galaxies mostly stick to the disks, the material around the galaxy bulges to a great extent. If you recall the lost light of Hubble story from last year, this would be the radio version. And one step bigger in scale here with the new simulation of the intergalactic medium, where we go beyond the halo of the galactic system to the large scale structure connections and dynamics with them. We've been mentioning the climate movie and catastrophe movie, but it's the plasma cosmology that lays the foundation for both. It took Dr. Anthony Peratt and I considerable effort to be allowed to share that qualitative description of a still classified data set. So you're watching it, especially from 30 minutes on, really makes us feel like that difficult and utterly terrifying interaction with the intelligence community was worth it. Folks, we greatly appreciate your support. We've got wind map forecasts and shots of our star to close. As I mentioned, we're hoping to get that special video out to you later today. We'll do this all again tomorrow, right here, but right now it's 4.20 a.m. in the new Valley of the Sun. Eyes open, no fear. Be safe, everyone.